Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include European Union approves 5.5 million euros for Government of Liberia's decentralisation programme. EU recognises Angolan executive work. EU plans a single telecoms regulator. A European Union united by road but divided by tolls. Plus, Russia is worried as Ukraine creeps closer to the EU. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The Internal Affairs Ministry has announced in Monrovia that the European Union has approved a contribution of 5.5 million euros for disbursements to the Liberian government in support to the country's decentralisation programme. The contribution under the European Development Fund is aimed at supporting the efforts of the Liberian government in implementing the adopted national policy on decentralisation and local governance from 2013 to 2017. It's worth watching this space. Internationally, all eyes are on Africa as the next provider of primary and secondary supporting resources. In a nutshell, this highlights what is wrong with the Keynesian economic model. It requires continual growth, and of course that is not sustainable. But in, e in an effort to maintain the status quo, all westernised governments are required to keep chasing consumer growth. You cannot run an economy in the consumer model, and the debt burdens of Europe and the USA are demonstrating this. An economic model that relies upon hairdressers who cut hair for accountants who do the bookkeeping for solicitors who sue hairdressers for giving accountants bad haircuts is doomed to failure. The European Union representative to Angola, Carolina Cordero, Tuesday in Luanda recognised that the Angolan executive is committed to the implementation of Water for All, a programme designed to supply drinking water to the country's capital cities. The European southern nations are going to hell in a handbasket, and yet the debt-encumbered EU still continues to lavish funding throughout the African continent. Friends, we need to be asking the question, why? How is this benefiting us in Europe? The European Commission is thought to be considering a plan for a single telecoms regulator to cover all 28 member states. The new regulator could take over some of the responsibilities of national watchdogs like Ofcom here in the UK. The Commission told the BBC that the proposal was not a finished document, so it could not confirm the details. But a leak to the Financial Times appears to show that such plans have been under consideration. Well, here is some sleight of hand reporting. We have shown, and it is already on record, that this is the objective of Neely Crows, who stated clearly in her statement earlier this year that she intends to develop a single market for telecoms across the EU. Look, folks, this is an example of how the reporting is being twisted out of perspective by the UK mainstream media. In this article, the twist is in the words, not a finished document, which the BBC then reports as though it's not going to happen. Well, it is. It will. And there isn't a thing our Muppet puppets in Westminster can do about it. In Europe, it is possible to have an 11-day holiday during which you visit eight countries and never show your passport once. But despite Europe's single border area, you will still notice nationally distinctive driving styles and differences in road qualities. And one key thing we noticed in our travels is how we pay for using the roads. In this article, we take a look at the different methods used nationally to fund the road systems and what the implications might be for a Europe-wide funding system. Ukraine is moving closer to finally agreeing a key first step towards joining the European Union, sparking concern from Russia that Kiev is decisively shifting away from the Kremlin, analysts have said. The train is moving. There is a 90% probability that the Ukraine will sign an association agreement with the European Union in November, said Oleg Ustenko, executive director of the Blazer International Fund in Kiev. Well, it's a little surprise that Russia is beginning to worry with the US rhetoric about 
the deployment of a missile defense system along the EU borders, the escalating conflict in Syria and potentially Iran, the EU economic saber rattling at Gazprom over energy pricing. The world is changing and changing rapidly. There are many that predict complete economic collapse in the US and the EU, and with escalating debts and social unrest, it doesn't look good. History shows us the path most likely to be followed, and 2013 Europe and the USA look very similar to pre war 1930s. Just this time, they've got bigger bombs. Today in our video library, this interview with Ring of Fire Media considers how the Cypriot bailing could happen in the USA. Interestingly, this interview exposes the banks to fraud laid in place by the derivative scam. Apparently, legislation gives derivative holders first priority as a creditor. What that means in short is that as a depositor, if you bank with one of the large corporate banks, your money is going to be confiscated to pay for the derivative's priority creditors. The EU is waving its statistics sheet and talking about a 0.3% growth in quarter two. Is this really the recovery underway, or are we on the bumpy plateau overlooking the next fiscal cliff? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>